we've been here for a few years now. This is the seventh year. Uh, lots of things have changed. Uh, it's obviously been a pleasure to be invited back year after year, and uh, it's been yeah, it's been it's been fantastic to see that they've kind of kept it. Uh, they've they've you know there's a you can see there's the quality control is there you know uh, they haven't outgrown or overgrown the festival um, and for me I guess because we've been coming here for so long it's been it's an opportunity for us to we meet up with lots of friends here you know um, we also have a PR business so we you know there's lots of labels here that we work with um, day to day where we help them with their, their press stuff so. Yeah, for me, it's always a good opportunity to catch up with uh, old friends. Um, and yeah, I mean, they uh, for, for us, I mean, to be playing again on the, the Ward Garden this year, uh, it's a pleasure. For me, it's my favourite spot. Uh, you know, we've lucked out with the sound. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, and yeah, obviously, Flugel tonight and Herbert. Yeah, it's, uh, it should be a special night. It's been the same each year. Tom's like... Uh, you know, uh, this, you know, who, who, he always asks me who are we interested in booking. Um, we always try to keep it like uh, label related to so artists we're working with. And uh, as the years have progressed, you know, we've kind of developed as a label, um, same as they have as a festival. Uh, so it's, it's, it's always an open discussion and we always, you know, we, we always speak about, uh, we always aim big, you know, and uh, I mean, we've been talking about getting Lauren Garnier for about five years, and uh, who knows, next year might be the year. Uh, but I mean, yeah, last year, uh, Weatherall and Flugel, and again, Flugel tonight. So it's a festival that when we invite people to come, uh, they, they always go away with nothing but positive things to say about their experience of it, um, and always want to come back. So uh, yeah, most years it's kind of just like, People are coming to us going, are oh, you doing Gotwood again? Can we play? You know, so uh, that's testament to what those guys have created here. Yeah, so talking Hypercolor, a label known for its forward thinking releases, what do you look for when selecting the releases that get signed to the label? And is it, do you, Alex, and Stay? Stay, Stay, yeah, yeah. Carefully select each release together? Uh, is things have changed. There's a, it's a bit of a democratic process these days. Um, Alex is like doing, uh, he's successful with his Denson Peak, a techno project. He can't be here tonight, unfortunately. Um, but I mean, it's a combination of uh, us finding uh, new artists and music uh, through our own buying habits. You know, we all still have it, record collectors. And, um, and I guess as the years have gone on, we've, we've, uh, we've kind of just gone all guns blazing in terms of who we want to work with, you know? Um, there's no secret to it other than just emailing ex-DJ and saying, you know, we want to do a record together. Um, it's gone pretty ballistic over the last three years, you know, we've done records with Lauren Garnier, Roman Flugel, of course, Matthew Herbert, who's here tonight, uh, Luke Viber, who played here a few years ago. Um, it's a pretty surreal situation. We're like doing records with our heroes, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, well, yeah, so I mean, it's literally, we will just, we just contact people, you know? It's like, we had a core group of artists in the beginning and uh, everyone's gone on to their own successes. And uh, I think the label's at a point now where we are, we, we, we can kind of, I mean, it's been 10 years, so, you know, all these guys that we've been working with have been successful in their own right. They're busy guys, uh, so we are now looking looking to the future with uh, a group of new artists that we're working with. Um, but I'm sure you know everyone we've worked with have wanted to work with us because they've respected the label, they've followed it for years, uh, and that's at least what they t tell us. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess it'll be a combination of uh, hopefully doing more records with these uh, legends and uh, these new artists that we're um, we're interested in what they're doing, you know. We set out years ago to not be really pigeonholed. Um, you know, as you uh, probably know, scenes come and go, you know, so, uh, and we have multiple labels as well that kind of encompass the various different uh, styles and strains of electronic music. Um, 
But I mean, yeah, it's, it's I don't know. I guess I guess the, the 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 future of the label for us is is kind of is, now is looking to the future. It's working with you know those those new up and coming artists. Said in 2014, I uh, think the label is just starting to flourish. So <laughs> that was your seventh, eighth year. Um, was there a particular moment, like breakthrough, or was it kind of a gradual process of all of these things coming together? I think I think it was more uh, to do with that. We found ourselves working with all these amazing artists, you know. I, I think if you'd have asked us ten years ago that we would have done records with like Viber and Herbert and Flugel, I would have said don't be silly, you know. So I think I think that statement came at a time where there was lots going on, you know. We were we were putting out we had I think that particular year, I mean it kind of all came together. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's ho hopefully much more the same, really. But you know, it's uh, it's a transient industry, and uh, yeah, we're we're looking to the next ten years. You know, um, I guess we, you, you, from from my point of view, you've, we've kind of like propelled to this point where, uh, I mean, can you can it get any bigger than working with Lauren Garnier? You know, it's like. Um, but then we also worked with like you know Maya Jane Coles and Huxley, and we put out their early records. Um, equally, they've gone on to their own successes as well. So uh, yeah, I guess this is kind of uh, for for us. You know, I, I'm very conscious that we can't maintain this kind of upward <laughs> increase. So uh, yes, I guess it's kind of keeping up with the uh, the kids. You know. In, in not wanting to be pigeonholed, I think it's enabled us to continue, you know, as, as we said, trends come and go. And the fact that we can do a techno record with Denson Pika or a disco album with Luke Viber, um, it kind of keeps our options open, you know. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of stood us well now in this situation where we are I don't think we're a label that people come to to check a particular sound, um, but I think someone at some point over the years has, might have purchased our records or, you know, taken an interest in a particular artist. Um, so I think I think maybe people are just kind of, oh, you know, what's going on over there? Maybe I think yeah. To a lot of people, we're hit and miss, you know, but that's fine. I, I would I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other way, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, who knows what's going to happen over the next 10 years. Uh, yeah, it should be quite interesting. I mean, like I said, this we can do whatever we want now, you know? It's like we're not we're not a disco label, we're not a house label, although, you know, fundamentally house and techno is kind of at the core of what we do. Um, but, you know, we've put out a jungle record from Two Bad Mice or, you know, so yeah, yeah. So three records you would take to a desert island? Uh, Hypercolour ones or in general? Anything. Okay. It can be or can not. I mean, am I on a desert island on my own or? Yes. Oh shit. You so. Three records. Um, there's a, there's a quiet village remix of Jonathan Jeremiah, which uh, I listen to a lot. Uh, it's a tearjerker. So I don't know if I'm gonna be stranded on a desert island crying my eyes out. Um, but I mean, it's a beautiful record. It's got these amazing strings. It's a kind of, uh, I mean, it, it, it's the sort of record you would listen to on a beach. So I'm guessing if you're on a desert island, there's probably going to be a beach there. Um, so yeah, I mean, like, what can it, can, you know, can it hurt if you're just crying, thinking of all your friends and family? I, I'll go for that one. Um, uh, cliche, but uh, massive attacks, unfinished sympathy. Um, also a tearjerker, I guess. God, well, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not shining myself in the best light here. Uh, but an amazing record, and a record for me that um, it kind of played quite a prominent part in my uh, uh, musical uh, history, you know. Uh, and what else? God, uh, so I guess I should probably go with something a bit more upbeat and happy, but, um, oh, I'll tell you what, uh, Lauren Garnier's Man With A Red Face. Uh, sax happy, euphoric, uh, and just a, a, yeah, just a fantastic techno. Well, it's kind of house, but, uh, and again, had, you know, 
I, I've probably played the record to death over the years. So, um, and obviously, you know, Lauren's a, a hero of mine uh, for many reasons, his DJing uh, skills, and uh, he's a bloody nice bloke as well. So, uh, so yeah, so I guess on that desert island, I'd be crying a lot and then picking myself up with this euphoric techno record. How have streaming services like Apple Music and Spotify affected you? What are your thoughts on the new age? Um, I mean, you, we've kind of had to adapt and roll with it, I guess, but um, we've strangely gone through a kind of upturn with our vinyl sales, you know? Um, I guess that's maybe, I mean, the label kind of took a different path, maybe four or five years ago. And, uh, we're, you know, we we're, we're do like Luke Vibert, for example, um, he sells a lot of records and, uh, so we kind of went through this phase. We were, we, we were like, I mean, the first time we put a record out, uh, our distribution company went bust, and that gives you an ind that gives you an indication as to like you know the the kind of landscape at the time. So we kind of at that time adapted, and you know, I think even I you know wasn't probably buying as many records, and everyone was embracing uh, MP3s and uh, CDJs and, and so on, and. Uh, a lot of the artists we were working with were uh, perhaps maybe selling more units, you know, they appealed more to that audience. But I think everyone at the time kind of went, shit, no one's, uh, no one's making any money selling records. So, you know, you have to adapt to this. But then, uh, yeah, streaming come along. So now, uh, you know, digital files don't really sell. Um, and I see this, but I mean, it depends, you know, certain music has a digital audience, certain music has a vinyl audience. And, uh, you know, we actually probably, as a label now, profit more from uh, physical sales than we do for digital. So it's, uh, I mean, I guess, you know, I don't know, vinyl's cool again, as, as everyone's saying, but uh, let's hope that it continues for, for longer. But, uh, you know, we, we obviously are aware of what we need to do and how we know how to market a record. So we know where to, uh, which our audience to, to target with, with specific releases. So, um, so I'm not, you know, we're not vinyl purists, um, uh, but you know, obviously everyone would like to sell more records really. Um, but yeah, you just kind of have to adapt your approach, you know, and I guess anyone that's been selling records for long enough kind of understands that, you know. Um, but I mean, streaming sucks, you know, it's good for the people, but uh, for an independent label, it's, like, it's not really much to write home about. It's not, it's, it's not much revenue, but I don't know, who knows, it, it, this, might in, this might improve. There's a lot of things that need to happen. Uh, you know, the, at the moment, uh, royalty payments, for example, if you're uh, for public performances for PPL and PRS, there's no real way of registering what's being played, so a lot of the time we're probably not getting paid for music that's that's being played of ours. So, uh, but I mean, yeah, there's technology that I believe has been coming into play for years and years, but it's not quite been uh, implemented yet. So they need to pull their socks up, basically. I do the PR and press for all our releases, so. Um, it, yeah, it's pretty much about a release a month. What, um, what, what's the rest of 2017 looking like? Uh, so we have uh, we have a couple more albums. We have an album from Low Soul, um, who again is someone we've been buying records and supporting for years. Uh, we have an album from DMX Crew, uh, an album from The Cyclists, are three albums, but the DMX Crew one is due out pretty soon. Uh, and we have a single from Yulisa Hall, who's been doing some pretty groovy techno stuff. and. Uh, uh, that will feature a Zenka Brothers remix um, uh, due out pretty much next week as an A Sagittarian release. Hi Nick, Nick is our label manager. I've uh, been doing some pretty cool stuff for a few years now. Um, and uh, yeah, we're talking with Matthew Herbert again about doing a follow-up record. Um, I mean, there's probably more. It's, uh, I get a bit confused these days. I have a few other labels uh, where there's quite a lot going on, but um, from the last release schedule, I mean, that's pretty much what I remember. <laughs>